Can anyone figure out a way to test why water that is warm does something alternate than cold and saline water? We have some bowls with water here. Can anyone think of any way to uh, test if we have any uh, connection between those? Yeah. Well, uh, you could try mixing them, right? Yeah. Or putting something in them that it, that we know is pretty neutral and see where it sinks fastest. Or you could just put them on top of each other with some color in maybe so you can distinguish them, right? This lesson starts with a problem to solve. How can we explain thermohaline circulation? Once the students have formulated different hypotheses, they will have to test them using an experiment. To do so, the teacher asks specific questions so an experimental protocol can be imagined. The teacher also presents some of the material available as a guide for reflection. The teacher therefore makes sure that the protocol comes from the students themselves and not from the teacher, which leads to a better appropriation of the protocol by the students. So what would happen for example, if we mixed salty water, saline water, uh, into more fresh water, what should happen? Salt makes, salt is heavier, so uh, the salts would sink to the bottom, right? Yes. The salty water. That is our thesis number one. What should happen when we put salty water into fresh water? You said it would sink. It would sink. And what would happen to cold water? If we color that, what would happen if we put it into a warm basin? It would sink too. It would sink too. Okay. Before the students conduct their experiments, it is important to make sure that they will look at the relevant results. By asking them to think about their expectations, the teacher can check to see if they've understood what they will observe. This is called verifiable impact and it will both help to focus the student's attention when they set up the experiment and will also facilitate the observation of the results. <laughs> okay, and what happened to the cold water as you poured it into the room temperature water? Um, you can see that it, um, it like sank to the bottom of the bowl. You can see like the color was more like Right in the bottom. Good job. Okay, so did that correspond to our uh, thesis about density of water? Yeah, yeah. It, it being heavier. Okay, good job. Thank you. And group number two, what happened to your experiment? Um, we put salt in our water. Yeah. And then we found, we found out that the salt is heavier. Salt water is heavier. Than Why? What happened to the salty water when you poured it in here? Um, it fell to the bottom. It fell to the bottom, mean, yeah. meaning it's heavier. Good job. And the final group here, which experiment did you carry out? Uh, the one with the hot water. The one with the hot water. Okay, so you had room temperature water and you had hot water, represented in red. What happened when you poured it in? Uh, the hot water floated to the top. Yes. Okay, so it surfaced. Nice. Okay, so the climate is, is getting warmer, which heats up, the, uh, heats up the surface of the water. Also, we're uh, melting the ice at the poles, making the water fresher. Uh, we are uh, doing things to this thermohaline um, circulation. Now, where do uh, these, uh, where do we have the vertical mixing? Where does it happen around the globe? Um, around the Pacific Ocean. There's a little bit in, in the Indian Ocean, yeah. in the Atlantic Ocean. Exactly. And uh, is it uh, in the middle of the, is it around a crater or is it around the poles? It's like at the top. Yes. Okay. And do you have any explanations as to why it would be up there and not in the middle? Um, it's closer to like uh, the Arctic Ocean. Exactly. And what happens up there? It's cold. It's very cold. So we have cold water salty water, and it mixes with the warm water with the currents. After carrying out experiments in the classroom, 
it is strongly recommended to make the link between the results and the conclusion of the experiment and the phenomenon involved in real life. Here, after a discussion about what has been observed in the classroom, the teacher comes back to the natural phenomenon, the thermohaline circulation, by asking questions about a map. The students can therefore reinvest the knowledge they've just acquired to answer the problem of the lesson.